um, Deckard's alienation is, you know, something that's really, you know, uh, palpably mixed into the way that this world has been designed and the way that Harrison Ford, like, moves his way through it and yeah, how sort so, of pitted against other characters he is. Yeah, and he's so, uh, he's very passive about everything, too. Like, up to, up until a point, of course, because once the, you know, he, he starts killing the replicants, he starts getting challenged about his own beliefs, and especially with Rachel. But at, in the first, like, 30 minutes especially, he's just, even when he's being told what to do and doesn't want to do it, he just kind of is, like, eye-rolling about it and just He's just going tired along. and wants to eat noodles, man. Yeah, he's, That's like, his... he's like, as long as I <laughs> get to sit back here at this restaurant and eat my noodles like fine i don't want to do this but even when he's being arrested by i think it's gaff um he does he just doesn't seem to really care it's inconvenient for him but he's just like yeah well this is just part of my life i guess <laughs> and he plays like yeah, that well, and, throughout really yeah and 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 what's interesting is like obviously you get that um from harrison ford's just performance you don't really need anything else from it because harrison mm-hmm. ford is you know he he is giving a pretty expressive performance in this but i'm i'm yes. gonna assume you watched the final cut jamie for this and I not did. the one with his his voiceover yeah have, have I, you I don't know i don't know if you've ever seen one? that version no I've, i I've have only seen the seen voiceover the one. final cut which i do find interesting that like the one that you know uh, Ridley got full editorial uh, control over it didn't come out to like 25 years after the initial movie. It's pretty wild, yeah. um, which is pretty no, crazy. And, 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 and how different it is. Like uh, yes, I originally because um, I, you know, like I when I first watched the film, I actually think I did see the non final cut first. And I definitely went, wow, this is like weird just the way that you know, uh, the way that Harrison Ford is like flatly explaining shit that yeah, is like app- you're just seeing in the film. He apparently really begrudgingly did that. And it was like the, the, the people were saying that he, he had to do it, I guess for narrative purposes, but Ridley didn't want it. So he felt like he was not only going against his own interests, but the directors and the creative minds interests. So well, I, apparently when he was in that vocal booth, he was not enthused. And I guess no, you, you can, can you can tell <laughs> yeah. it, it, like it is such a, phoned in like narration that he delivers where he's just like you know i'd uh he's explaining why he's like no longer a blade runner or why and why he's being like pulled back in and literally it's harrison ford being like you know i'd quit because i had a belly full of killing but then (laughs) i'd rather be a killer than a victim (laughs) (laughs) how does he does he say it like like really coldly or is it more like a like almost like an old school noir where there's a little bit of uh not upbeatness to it but a little bit of that classic swag no that quality that you're thinking of that is in there like it is it like (laughs) it's not tonally consistent at all it is absolutely dark you'd figure if he's gonna do that it'd have to be like him like really roughing it up and going in the low fry voice and all that kind of stuff Oh my God. <laughs> and then meanwhile, you're looking at like just the loneliest city and, and just darkness and rain and trash. And he's just like, ah, well, I had a belly full of killing, you see? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. That is what it, that is what it plays like. Oh and, man. That's, and and that's I crazy. know that him and Ridley both decided early on that they didn't want to do it. And then the studio forced him to do it. And, and apparently Ford was like upset that like Ridley was like letting them do that. And like, mm. that was like, there was also a little bit of, you know, I think they they definitely respected one another's craft, but apparently they did not get along super well during some of the production, um, uh, (laughs) of, of this. And that definitely didn't, didn't help, especially too. They made them go back and like reshoot like a happy ending that used like stock footage from the shining and everything like that. Just a really bizarre, um, you know, uh, thing that happened with the theatrical cut on this, but both of us watched the final cut, which is good because it totally preserves, so much of the mood and you know so much yeah and so much of the the feeling of the film like i've that that's the most disruptive part i find is having harrison ford describe to you the text (laughs) that you know you're meant to be feeling wordlessly and in the performance and in the style is all there yeah wordlessly like you just you really don't 
need it. Like you don't need to be told, yes, this is a bad thing that he's doing. It feels bad when you get to those moments where, you know, even the opening stuff with the first replicant, when they're combing through the no new employees, like looking for them. And we meet this guy named Leon, who is one of the uh, repli Nexus six replicants who is part of Roy, Roy Batty's team. And you just know that something is off with the way this interaction is happening. That's not a person talking to another person. It's someone like trying to discover if someone else is someone that he can just kill yeah. in that moment. And I love that he gets him on kind of like this hypothetical uh, question about like a tortoise. He's like, I've never seen a turtle before. <laughs> yeah. And then they, uh, he eventually asks him about his mother, which really upsets him. But like the first, one of the first things we see is this Android get very, very upset about being probed in this boy comp test and then just showing more blasting. emotion than the agent himself. <laughs> Yes. And then just blasting that dude away while he like flies through a wall and everything like that smash cut to, you know, this is like the process of how this world works. And here's what this world has built. You get the giant like Pan Am and Coca-Cola ads against the rainy, dirty, you know, sort of brutalist fu retro futurist vision of neon screens and which points to this idea of, you know, there's these sort of like inhuman structures that you know like feel like they are in uninhabitable essentially for yeah. like real people or for real human connection like clearly decker doesn't have anyone and when he gets called back in to like for example take a look at this case because they're like we need the best blade runner we need to call him back in this is the guy who knows how to do all the killing and we can already tell by looking at harrison ford's face that we don't need him to say i got tired of the killing this guy's had <laughs> enough of the killing and it's really taking taken a toll on him even as he's being shown